this video. <laughs> I'm so tired. I'm not gonna lie. It's 2 a.m. where I live in Nashville, Tennessee, in the United States of America. Because I know people watch my video from all around the world now. And uh it is Saturday, February 19, 2022. But yes, I said I was gonna finish off the video that I was doing. Um on uh, talking about the hyraxes, the conies in the Bible, on uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 30, verse 26. So focusing on that scripture verse. And I didn't finish off talking about the foundation, uh, fortification, um, just the refuge for a cony. All right, so I'm going to talk about that in this video right now. All right, so let's finish off part two of Go to the Hyrax. This is the title of the lesson, Go to the Hyrax. Lessons from the Rock Badger, and I'm in Proverbs 30, verse 24 to 28, but I'm focusing on verse 24 and 26. So let's go ahead and read it. So Proverbs 30, verse 24 reads, There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. Verse 26, The conies are a feeble folk, yet make their houses in the rocks. So guys, like I was trying to say at the uh, end of my uh, last video, uh, somebody asked, why did I uh, shut off my video? That was the last question. Because I needed, honestly, I needed some drink. I, I was parched. All right. So I needed to get some drink. And why is Trouble Don't Last connecting? Just connect, man. So people can hear my vibe. Like, come on. But anyways, uh, I'm just going to keep on going. I, I can't just be focused on that. Hopefully it, it works out. But maybe I should just stop it. Sorry about this, guys. I'm trying to fix the live. But I hope everybody's doing good, though. I don't I really don't know what's going on with Trouble Don't Last. This is what sucks about going live on multiple platforms like I do. Like, if something happens on one, it throws up. You see how I'm it throws out the video right like i can't even do the video like you guys just like waiting it's all you hear is like my mouse mouse sounds but okay anyways let's get to it okay i think i got it hopefully i don't encounter another bug like that defect all right so anyways um yeah so one thing we learned about the conies with them being feeble folk is they position themselves well in life Right. So this is the application for our lives and what we're supposed to do. So from the Conies, we learn about foundation and fortification. So they build their life upon the rock. Right. Their whole being, their dwelling place, where they stay at is in the rock. Right. So I want to read Psalms. 104 verse 18, it says the high mountains belong to wild goats. The cracks are a refuge for the hyrax. Right. So hyraxes, again, I mentioned in the first video, hyraxes can't outrun. They cannot fight back. They have no weaponry in their biological makeup. They are weak and feeble, right? And so yet they have wisdom. They're so wise. See, just like verse 24 says in the Bible, it says they are but four things which are a little upon the earth, yet they are exceedingly wise. They're so wise that they know that they can find their security, their wisdom, their safety, their, their power, their strength in the rocks. Man, so like, man, the application, the, the reason why this is in the Bible, God is trying to tell you through his creation, through what he created, through the rock badger, through the coney, through the uh, hyraxes. These are all the same animal by multiple. It's called multiple names. Right. So uh, God's trying to tell you through creation, this scripture verse, Psalms, verse 18, verse two. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in who I take refuge, my shield in the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, man. So while the snakes try to attack conies, while the bears try to eat conies, while the lions try to slaughter rock badgers, conies, rock badgers, hyraxes, they can hide in the rocks, in the crack of the rocks, man. So when no, and they can hide to where no animal can lay a hand on them. No animal can touch them. No animal can get to them, right? And so everybody wants to devour it and eat a coney. But you can't get to them because you have to go through the rock in order to get, get to them, 
You see how this is going, guys? You see how this ties in with the Bible, like with our Christian life and everything, man? So here goes a quote I have for you, or a point I want to make. In order for predators to be able to get to you, they have to go through the rock. So that's the whole point of why conies, rock badgers, hyraxes are in the Bible, right? It's teaching us a lesson, man. So if if your foundation is solid and your fort fortification is solid, your adversary slash the enemy has to find lunch somewhere else. So something I wanted to, to point out with you guys is like we need to talk about a foundation. What is a foundation? So I looked up the definition for foundation, and here it is. It says the lowest uh, load bearing part of a building, typically below ground level, right? So that don't really hit on what we want. So another definition is an underlying basis or principle. That's pretty good. This is where we're trying to get a justification or a reason. So guys, what's your reason for being? What's your justification for living? You know, what is your basis? Like, if I was to ask you, who are you? What are you? What would be your answer? Tell me about yourself. Who am I? All questions like that. What would your answer be? Because if your answer isn't the right answer, then who, who you identify as? Your your foundation is jacked up, and the conies don't have that problem, right? So let's let's talk about this. So, and let's focus on fortification as well. So uh, fortification. So is the definition is a defensive wall or other reinforcement built to strengthen a place against attack. Man, this is powerful. So it's a rampart, you know, an outwork defenses, man. So this is this is so powerful, man. So I, okay, let's get to it, man. So there's a song that. Uh, we used to sing at my church, and it's called, you know, I Can Go to the Rock. It's by the Chicago Mass Choir. And so here goes the song. It says, when everything else fell, I can go to the rock. When trouble's around me, I can go to the rock. God promised that he would keep me if I abide in his holy word. No matter what the problem, I can go to the rock. And so Jesus, my way maker, he makes a way each and every day. No matter what the problem, I can go to the rock. Jesus, my strong tower. When I am weak, he makes me strong. No matter what the problem, I can go to the rock. Guys, you see this, guys? So Jesus, my heart fixer. When I am sad, he makes me glad. No matter what the problem, I can go to the rock. So, man, this is so crazy on so many levels. So I want to talk to you guys about uh, fort fortifica fortification and about foundation. And I want to give those definitions because of this. So... We're about to hit on this, man. I want to build it up. So in Ephesians 2, verse 19 through 20, it says, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners or strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. Built on a foundation, guys. Here's the key. Built on the foundation of apostles and prophets, prophets with Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. Guys, Jesus himself is the chief cornerstone. I'm going to read Psalms 118, verse 22. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Jesus was rejected here on this earth. A lot of people didn't receive him as the Messiah and as Lord. Most people didn't, actually. So, but he, even though the world rejected him, that didn't change the fact that he's the cornerstone. He's the chief cornerstone. Do you know what a cornerstone is? Guys, this is so powerful. A cornerstone is the first stone, right? It's the stone. It's... It, it, the cornerstone, while building, while, while building the stone, guys, it's the first stone that sets the tone for every other side and how what every other side of the stone is going to look like. And it's the basis of what the whole entire stone is going to look like. That's the cornerstone, guys, the chief cornerstone. That's Jesus. Guys, you, you get this? So uh, every dimension on every side of a diamond, of a stone, is all predicated and based on how perfect the, the cornerstone is right so man guys this is this is crazy so that's how we're supposed to be as believers right the cornerstone we're supposed to be imitators of christ we talked about that with how uh coney blend in with the rocks wherever they live at and abide at they blend in they're camouflaged they they're just like the rocks like you can't even tell that they're up there because they blend in that's how we should be as believers man we should be uh, uh, not just our identity our whole being it shouldn't just be on the rock. We should be just like the rock is, just like Jesus is, guys. So you see what I'm saying? So we don't build our life on anything but the rock. He's the chief cornerstone. So everything he 
Jesus showed us how to live, how to how to go about our lives, how to love our neighbor, how to do everything. And we're supposed to do it just like he does. So, guys, what are you building your life upon? Is Jesus your chief cornerstone? Is he your foundation? This is what the Coney does. The Coney's go to the rock. They stay in, at the rock. They dwell at the rock. The rock. They, they Their whole being is based on being in the rocks. Right. <laughs> they even hide in the cracks of the rocks. So they get as close and as intimate and go into the trenches of however deep they can go into the rocks, guys. You guys see what I'm saying? So, man, like this reminded me of a song. And the song is a hymn, though, actually. It said, uh, it's called My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. And the lyrics go like this My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. And look at these conies. We just learned in the Bible, in verse 26, the conies are but a feeble folk, yet they make their houses in the rocks. This is Proverbs 30, verse 26, guys. This is in the Bible for a reason. What are you building your life on? What are you building your marriage on? What are you building your education, your finances, your family, and your employment pursuits on? Because if you don't build your life on Jesus, man, it's not going to sustain, man. It's, it's sinking sand. So, like, yes, guys. So, here goes another scripture verse, Psalms 11, verse 3. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? Like, guys, your foundations have to be correct. And it, there's so many scripture verses. So let's go ahead and get to it. The Coneys have the right foundation. Their foundation's on the rock. So they can stand against any troubles, any trials of life, any storm of life, and be okay. Because they're, they, they're, their tent, their house, their dwelling place is in the rock, like we talked about in the first video. So guys, man, so Luke uh, chapter 6, verse 46 to uh, 49, Jesus said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say? As for anyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. All right. So this is what people who follow Christ, who uh, stand on Jesus and everything he's done. This, this is what these people are like. Right. They are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid a foundation on the rock. Just like the conies, guys. <laughs> when a flood came, the storm struck the house, but could not shake it because it was built well. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. Mm -mm -mm. The moment a storm struck that house, it collapsed and destruction was complete. Guys, what are you building your life on? What is your foundation? Because, guys, in this story, there's one storm. It's the same storm that hits two houses. and But these two houses have different foundations. And only one stood the test. Guys. <laughs> Man, foolish builders, unbelievers, awful foundations. They won't hear and understand this message. Like, it'll just go over their heads, right? They won't do anything with what I said, right? So others think that they can fend and protect themselves in this life. So others believe that they don't need God. But we, as believers, we know that we're weak on people. We're nothing without God. We're nothing without Jesus. He does it all for us. By his grace, we're allowed to do any and everything. If he called us to do it and gave us the grace to do it. You guys get what I'm saying? And this is how the Coney's operate. Coney's operate just like this. Their house, unbelievers, man, their house is not be being built on something that will stand the winds, the waves, the hardships, and the trials of life. But we as believers, man, the Coney's house is on the rocks. What can happen to rocks? Nothing. Like their their house is always there. Like <laughs> so, guys, man, this is so crazy. You guys see the lesson, man. So First Corinthians three, we we uh, did a study on that in First Corinthians three. Um, uh, first of all, we did. I'm leading a Bible study all on the book of First Corinthians. I told you guys I'm tired. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to hurry up and finish this. And so First Corinthians three was my one of my favorite chapters in the book of First Corinthians in that Bible study. And so in Chapter three of First Corinthians, people associated themselves with the with the a certain speaker, with a certain apostle. Some of them were followers of Paulus, and that's what they defined themselves as. Some of them, uh, they defined their whole being and their whole identity based on Paul, Jesus, or Peter, right? And the people who uh, who uh, based all their achievements, all their success, they took that on. So whatever Jesus did, they. they they, they identify themselves as that. And so all Jesus' achievements was all theirs. And like 
those are holy rollers though. They, like it's good to have Jesus as your number one, but they had it just to seem like they were better than other people because they followed Apollos, Paul, or Peter. So like, yeah, the church was divided, guys. This is what I'm trying to say. So um, yeah, man. So where does your identity come from? This is what we learned from the Conies as well. So they built their houses on the rock. Their foundation, their identity was on the rock. I don't think I even said it, but uh, yeah, the Conies, man, they don't go 25 feet away from, yeah, here, here it goes. Hyrax, this is another fact I didn't give about the Conies. I can't believe I didn't give it. Um, Hyraxes, they don't travel more than 150 feet from where they live, right? And where they live is the surprising slash wise things about Conies because they, they understand not to go too far from the rocks, right? Because they know that they're too vulnerable, too exposed, and have no means of help. And they're all on their own when they're away from the rocks. So they're humble. They know that they can't go too far from the rocks. Otherwise, they're not going to be protected when an eagle, when a bear, when a lion, when a snake, when just other animals try to feast on it, right? <laughs> the closer it is to the rock, the safer they are because they can get in the cracks, right? So guys, like, this is their foundation. You guys see what I'm saying? So this is why it's in the Bible. So just little thing, this thing that seems insignificant, this thing that, you know, goes over people's heads, like everything happens in life for a reason. And everything in life, God is trying to speak to you and point you towards him and try to show you where you need to go. You guys see what I'm saying? This is what we talked about in the first video. This is part two of Go to the High Racks, Lessons from the Rock Badgers. So y'all check out the... um the first video, part one. All right, so yeah, let's get to the scripture verse, man. So if we keep on reading in First Corinthians chapter three, verse nine through fifteen, it says this: For we are laborers together with God; ye are God's husbandry; ye are God's building. So guys, you are God's temple; you are God's building, which means you are somebody and something that God wants to use, right? So according to the grace of God, which is given unto me, a as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builder thereupon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. So Paul is literally talking about First Corinthians 3, identity, basically. What are you building your life upon? Because God, by his grace, has given you a life, and you can build your life upon something. So what? It, like I asked earlier, earlier, who are you? Tell me who you are, you know? It will take forever for most people to say, I'm a child of God. I'm a believer. Because I, mean, I can only be... My, my favorite basketball player of all time is Kobe Bryant. So I can only imagine being Kobe or Michael Jordan. Like, first thing I would say is, man, I'm the best basketball player to ever exist. You know what I'm saying? Or, like, people identify themselves as, like, their occupation. So it could be a bus driver, a janitor. It could be a CEO of uh, Elon Musk, you know, <laughs> Tesla man. Like, <laughs> I guess he's the CEO of Tesla. But, you know, you got people like that, right, like, that are really successful and they – base their identity on their success. Then you got other people, on the contrary, who base their success, know their failures on their identity. So they identify themselves based on their failure. Like, I'm a drug addict. I'm, uh, I don't know. I do, <laughs> I'm a drunk. You know, like, just negative stuff, man. Like, I divorced, got divorced three times, and that's all I'm good for. Like, that's what they identify themselves as. But what are you, what are you supposed to identify yourself as? Man, as a wise master builder, God's giving you the grace to build a life, man. So what is your foundation on, man? Your foundation should be on Jesus, just like the Conies. It should be on the rock. For there no, uh, verse 11 in 1 Corinthians 3, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ, man. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because... It shall be revealed with fire, and the fire shall try, sh shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If a man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So, guys, if you have the wrong identity, it's going to burn in the fire. It's wood, hay, and stubble. Like, guys, when I lost my Twitter page, I have never, I should have done a video on this, like, but here we go again. <laughs> Glad I mentioned it so many times in all my Bible studies now. But I lost 40k followers on Twitter. 40k. Let me share my screen. I want you. I want you guys to see this. Report this on Twitter, please. Maybe they'll give me back my account. I don't know. But I. I even said it in my bio. Like this is my 40k account. Is this account right here? Ferox uh, official. This guy stole my account. I have 40k followers on Twitter. 
40K. Do you know what happened when I lost 40K followers? You, you know, I'm a child of God. You know, you, you it didn't affect me. 40K. Who has 40K followers? 40K. You know how hard I work for my followers? I follow unfollow people every single day of my life. Follow unfollow. That's 400 people on one account. I have five Twitter accounts. So that's 12, 1,200 people, right? What's five times two? You know, so, I mean, five times four. Yeah, 1,200, right? But anyways, you, no, 2,000. So 2,000 people a day? Oh, my gosh. 2, 000, that's even worse. 2,000 people a day. That's how many people I follow a day. That takes three hours, guys. Three hours on three phones. So, guys, like, it was, it was some work getting 40K followers. And I lost it in a day. On July 17, 2021. So, guys, report this to Twitter support, but they still ain't done nothing. So, I had to start another Twitter account. And so, I started three Twitter accounts just because I lost that one. So, now I got five total. But, anyways, um, <laughs> as you can see, like, my identity came from my Twitter account. It came from how many followers I had. And, like, God was, everything happens for a reason, right? So, God got rid of my followers because he wanted to teach me that my identity doesn't come from my social media page. It doesn't matter how many followers I have. It matters about why I'm why am I doing it? You know, who am I touching? Who am I reaching out to? You know, what am I really learning? My relationship with God. Like that's the priority. Like just trying to reach people. What what really matters is just how I affected people. Not the number of followers I have, not the number of views I get. So that's what God was teaching me with all that. So everything happens for a reason. But guys, like this passage is talking about that as well. Like, if your foundation is set on the wrong thing. So if my identity came from my Twitter page and not on Christ, what do you think God's going to do as a child of God? You know, he's going to get rid of any any idols that you have, anything that you put before him, anything that you define yourself as that's not him. That's just how God operates. So for Coney, in order for them to live, they have to stay at the rock. Just imagine they didn't stay at the rock, what life would be like for them. They're weak and feeble folk. They can't run. They can't outrun any other animal. They have to stay at the rock. That's their strength. That's all they have. And when they go away from the rock, what happens? They get devoured. They die. Same thing happens for us. Like, <laughs> So we got to make sure we got the right identity. So we can make sure on our judgment day, we have gold, silver, and precious stones that last forever, and that wood, hay, and stubble that's going to be burnt in a fire when we are tested, guys. So this is the passage, guys. So 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3 also talks about this. In 1 Corinthians 12, it talks about spiritual gifts. I've been talking about this all on my YouTube channel like crazy, spiritual gifts, right? 1 Corinthians 12. So in verse 3, it says, therefore, Paul said, therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So only by the Holy Spirit can you say Jesus is Lord. Only by the Holy Spirit can you have these spiritual gifts that Paul is talking about. Only by the Holy Spirit can you know who the rock is, what the rock is, what to do with the rock, and to dwell in the tents of the rock, right? Only through the Holy Spirit, right? So if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're cursed because you can't say that Jesus is not Lord and be a child of God. This is what Paul is saying. Like, you're cursed. So that means whatever, no, no matter how well you sing, no matter how well you preach, no matter what miracles you do, no matter how many souls you reach, I don't care how much of a blessing you are to everybody else on this earth. If you get Jesus wrong, you got everything wrong. This is the Bible, guys. Jesus is the foundation. He's the chief cornerstone like we talked about, guys. He's the start of everything. So what you do with Jesus matters the most. It's the only thing that matters. What you do with Jesus will dictate everything. So if you get Jesus wrong, you got everything wrong. And I was just talking about uh, that with a with a long lost friend that I met up with, man. I'm so happy I got him back in my life, but I haven't talked with him in person yet, so I'm really excited. But guys, you ever had like somebody you just, you meshed with instantly, like y'all were instantly best friends. Like you just clicked, like everything was perfect with that person, right? I only had him in my life in seventh grade, and it was only for like seven months, and then he left, and I haven't talked to him since, and then I've been looking for him on Facebook, and I just now found him, just now, since since seventh grade, so, <laughs> and I've been looking for him on Facebook, I just now found him, so we're about to hang out, I'm excited, but you know, with him, he said that he doesn't know what to do with Jesus, he said that he, uh, yeah, he's been reading the original text of the Bible, and Jesus doesn't line up with 
the text that we have right now. So he doesn't think that Jesus is Lord. And, you know, that's that's. I would say that's fine and dandy. But like, guys, we learn from just everything we've been studying in the Bible in every passage. It's all pointing us towards Jesus. It's all leading us towards Jesus. It's all preaching and talking about and showing that Jesus is the Messiah and Jesus is the way. So without Jesus, we are nothing. Like, so, guys, here goes my qu last questions I was going to ask. And like, just from the story of the Conies, what we've been talking about, do you know who you should run to for safety? Because the Conies teaches us that. Literally, Proverbs 30, verse 26, the Conies are feeble folk, yet they make their houses in the rocks. So, guys, we're a feeble folk, so we should we should make our houses, our dwelling place, our uh, strong tower, our refuge, our safety should be in Jesus, man, in the rocks. So, man, uh, there's a song by uh, a group called Escape from the 90s, and it's called Who Can I Run To? You know, who can, who can I run to? <laughs> yeah, so who can I run to when I need love? Yeah, that song, Who Can I Run To? Yeah, so like with that song, man, who can you run to? Can, do you run to your friends? Do you run to your neighbor? Do you run to pe to the to the uh to the bank to to the politicians? Like, who do you run to for help? Who do you run to? Because you should be running to Jesus. This is really the passage what it's talking about. This is why the little things in in, in life, like verse twenty four says in Proverbs thirty, there be four things which are little upon the earth. So we think that they're insignificant. We think they're small matters. We think they don't matter at all. We think that they have no significance or purpose or anything. But yet they are exceedingly wise. These creatures are wise. So we're called to be wise as God's children. And remember who's writing this. Solomon is writing is writing, the, writing this passage. He God asked Solomon, what do you want out of all things? And Solomon said, I want wisdom. And this was the wisdom he got just from looking at God's creations. So I pray that we all get the wisdom that my, Solomon had through this passage, especially when it comes to the conies, because that's what we're talking about. The conies, the rock badgers, the hyraxes, these are all the terms for this animal that we're focusing on uh, in this video. So, guys, you know, is Jesus your rock? Do you find your home, your safety, your refuge, your dwelling, dwelling place in the cracks of the rock? And are you wise like the conies? And know that you can't do this life alone. You need God. You need Jesus, man. So the conies, they can't live without the rock. What about you? Can you live without God? This is the passage, man. This is why the Bible's so cool, man. I know darn well not many people got that from just reading about conies because I ain't never heard about a cony, hyrax, or rock, rock badger in my life at all, guys. So, yeah, man. So. Yeah, Jesus is the only one who can save you. He's the only one that can free you, protect you, has your back, and can help you and do it for you. Jesus is the answer. He's always the answer. So just like the conies, the same goes for you. Go to the rock. You know, go to the rock. So, man, this is the, this is the lesson, guys. I pray that it blessed you. I literally talked for an hour and 30 minutes on rock badgers, conies. Look at this cute animal. It's so cute, man. But, like, God just gave so much insight with this passage, man. Like, yeah, here goes the conies, man. This this is a cony and rock badger. Look how cute they are, man. Like, we learned so much. I pray that it blessed you guys. Sorry I had to do two videos on it. But, yeah, make sure to watch my first part of this video. It's the video before this. And the video's title, Go to the Hyrax Lessons from the Rock Badger. So, yeah, man, I had a lot of fun, guys. This was part two. So make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, Upload Past Crossroads. Watch all my videos. Share my videos. Turn on the post notifications so you know when I post. And guys, if you don't share, if you don't like, if you don't comment, this channel will go nowhere. I need you guys. I need your help. I'm pouring in everything I got. I'm sleepy. It is 2.30 a.m. in the morning. And I give you guys what I have left to give. And I have nothing left to give. So this was for you. So anyways, yeah, my Facebook page is Sean Christopher Jenkins and my LinkedIn. So y'all be friending me on there. Uh, yeah, like, comment, share everything, please. And my Twitter page, Snap, Instagram, TikTok, I'm live on there as well. Trouble don't last. Uh, and then my other Instagram page, my underscore daily underscore Bible. And then my Tumblr page, Trouble don't last number one. So thanks for tuning in, guys. You guys are truly a blessing. I'm going to bed. I'm going to bed, man. And somebody comment. Um, that rapport so d-a-t-r-e-b-o-r 
He commented on YouTube. He said, can I live without air or water? Nope. Just like I can't live without Jesus. Amen. And then uh, he said, run to Jesus for safety always. And yes, y'all need to follow Tiffany. This is one of my favorite people. And uh, yeah, he said, I got a great last name. Thanks. That must be your last name too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tiffany uh, with like five Y's. Yeah. She's one of my favorite people on social media. She really supports me and everything. She's so nice. Y'all follow her as well. And I saw one of my other favorite followers comment as well. I don't think she's still here, but Tickle Love with two E's at the end. She's one of my favorite followers as well. So y'all make sure to follow them people, man. But yeah, guys, I'm going to bed. I don't know what y'all doing. Oh, up. Y'all need to go to bed too. I normally stay up real late, like 7 a.m., 8 a.m., sometimes even 11 a.m. But like, like if I didn't have work and had anything to do, that's what I would do. But I'm too tired tonight, guys. And I got a meeting at 9 a.m. in the morning uh, for ministerial training and stuff like that. I actually, I'm joining the ministry, guys, officially, trying to be a pastor. And I don't have time to do it, but I'm doing it. So I need prayer, guys. I need prayer. I need help. Oh, you can leave a donation, too. Uh, I always uh, write that down uh, in the description as well, as well. You can give a donation to this ministry and everything. But, guys, you guys are truly a blessing. I pray that. You are doing spectac spectacular, amazing, stupendous, perfect. I pray if you're not, everything works in your favor to where you are. And uh, yeah, guys, pray the same thing for me. I'm trying to get married again. So I'm trying to save money. I pray that I, I save money to get married. Do I look tired? Because I, I feel like I do. I feel, I feel tired. <laughs> but yeah. And thanks, man. I'm glad you liked the video. Uh, yeah, man. Really appreciate it. I, I know. It wasn't my best, though, because I'm tired. But All right, guys. I'll talk to you guys later. I'm not going to waste your time anymore. All right. Peace out. And make sure to watch everything else on my YouTube channel, Upload Pastor Crossroads. You got any video ideas you want me to do, anything in the Bible, any questions, you name it, man. I got your back. I will answer them for you. Just DM me. I got you. A comment on one of my social media pages. I'll see it. And, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, I got a lot more videos on my YouTube channel, Upload Pastor, Upload Pastor Crossroads. So check that out. All right, and it's time for bed. I'll talk to y'all guys. You guys later. Peace out.